Hello everybody. What I'm going to be doing today is giving you a quick start guide to one of the most popular sound uh, libraries there is on the planet, and it is uh, East West Composer Cloud. Now for those of you who are not uh, familiar with this mighty beast, um, it allows you, currently they're doing a special, it's a subscription service where you get access to all their virtual instruments, and there are tons of them. We'll be going, we'll have a look at exactly what it includes in a minute. Um, but you get this for a subscription of a couple hundred dollars a year. Um, there are a number of different plans. Uh, you know, you can pay $30 a month, you can play a little bit more and have the plus edition, which has all kinds of exciting extra bits added on and all that kind of thing. But this is why it's quite popular because you don't have to come up with hundreds and hundreds of um, pounds slash dollars slash euros, depending on where in the world you are. Um, you can just go, okay, take the money, take my $20 a month and I'll get into this. Now, a um, couple of things to bear in mind when you choose your plan. Um, firstly, if you are a student or teacher, uh, there is a, a very good deal, which is $10 a month or $20 a month if you qualify for um, those ones, which is really good to get you into the world of um, uh, um, sampling. And it's not just orche orchestral stuff, it's, it's a sort of guitars and drums and some sound designy stuff and ethnic stuff and vocal stuff, all kinds of things. Now, the thing to bear in mind, um, there is a plus edition, which is the one which I'm going to be um, showing you. And uh, here it is. Okay, hello. Um, if you go for the plus edition, what you get is the multiple mic, you get all the diamond edition um, and platinum edition um, uh, instruments which have multiple mic positions and 24 bit samples. Ooh, they're also absolutely enormous. And remember, most of you will be downloading this stuff, so you could be sitting there watching it go tick, tick, tick for a very long time. You can buy it on a hard drive as well. If you go for the less expensive option, like the the, the cloud ver uh, the um, X or the normal one, you get the gold edition, um, which just have one pair of microphones uh, and a 16-bit rather than 24. So that actually is not it's it's not so much how much you get as but you've got to think about your hardware. This is the important thing that there's no point <laughs> in having these enormous diamond libraries which take up you know, multiple gigabytes of memory, if you're still working on a 1986 uh, Dell laptop or something like that, because your laptop will go, what do you mean? And it'll just get up, walk out, and you'll never see it again. That's what laptops do. Um, so bear this in mind, um, because as you'll see when we start getting into the uh, instruments themselves, the actual, uh, you know, the footprint in terms of uh, technology they need to run is quite substantial. Right, how about a quick once around? Um, the thing which you'll be using um, to, I should, oh, I should just say before I get into the actual thing, that if you are really into this and you want some help um, with the whole uh, Composer Cloud thing, I've put together a sort of micro course, I think you could call it, um, but it's, it's essentially a lot more videos like this showing you more of the, um, the uh, libraries how you use them, how to get the best out of them, things like that. And there's a link somewhere. <laughs> Where's that link gone? Where is it? I don't know. Um, that will help you, uh, that you can link through and, and, and sign up for that. So, but what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking at some of the basic stuff, how the play engine works, and sort of giving you a little once over, all that kind of stuff, so that you can get going really. So what you get, here is the, the, the bit of software you use is this one. It's uh, called uh, Play, and uh, this is version 6, and you have three basic panes. You have the player, you have the mixer, and you have the browser. You load the instruments from the browser, you muck about with them from the player, and you mix them from the mixer. So far, so good. Okay, so let us, uh, for example, if we look at what I've got loaded up here, you can see there's the instrument. It's Staccatissimo. Um, these from Hollywood Strings. It's got um, um, it's very straightforward. Um, you have multiple mic positions here if you're in the diamond edition. Um, so I'm listening to the main edition, the main mics um, at the moment. Each of these can be routed uh, to different outputs and things like that, if you so choose. Um, and each of these instruments comes with built-in reverb. Now, um, you can have, the reverb is basically um, the same uh, impulse response as you get with spaces. Um, you can have it on, 
I would personally recommend you don't use that and you have the um, reverb in a separate effects channel inside your door because if you start running out of um, CPU um, processing power in your computer and your computer starts going all kind of, I'm not feeling very well, I don't want to go to school today, like that, um, then you're going to need to nurture it a little bit. And to be honest, a lot of you, the, the, the irony here is that a lot of people sign up for, you know, students will sign up for $10 a month uh, because they haven't got much money. Therefore, they don't have a huge amount of technology and then they get these enormous instruments and poof, steam comes out there is. So this is one way you can start saving CPU. Just have one bus, one effects bus like that, which has got um, the reverb on. And then when we uh, want the reverb, we just use that one bus and we route the um, instruments to the bus uh, using effect sends like that, okay? So you don't necessarily need to use the um, um, the reverb inside if you don't want to. Now, the play engine itself, you can load multiple instruments into um, each, each uh, um, instance of it. Uh, so if you go into, if we go back to Hollywood Strings Diamond, there we go. Um, the uh, there we go. Let's look up here. So if we want to put some pits in uh, now Here's the thing you have a choice between add and replace uh, When you're going to put a new instrument in if you want to put it on a different channel So you've got a multi timbral instrument you click add Okay, and then in this right hand thing here You'll see it come up and that the way I've got this set up each of these Goes to us to a new MIDI channel. So oh, it's sitting underneath my head. There we go um, so that's channel one, that's channel two. It's worth having just a little quick look here before we do anything else at the famous um, preferences. That wheel up the top there takes you to the preferences. Um, other, and here's your option. Uh, MIDI channel assignment. Every time you load one, do you want it to go up by one? One, two, three, four, five. Why did I do that? It's as though you don't know to count. Am I being so patronizing that I think you, my esteemed subscribers, don't know how to count to five? Of course you do, I think. Um, so yeah, or you have it set to Omni where every new instrument comes in set to, to Omni. I sort of said that, didn't I? Okay. Um, the uh, streaming, this is an interesting one. Here's another thing. Top tip number two. Okay. What was top tip number one? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Top tip number two. Um, well, it's not so much top, it's really got to run off um, solid straight drive. Uh, it's got to run off an SSD. I don't know if you can see, there's an SSD. It's one of these little thin um, ones here. Um, it's because they're massively faster than old style spinny drives and you're going to need a lot of speed. Uh, if we go back into the settings here, you will see down the bottom there, um, it rates how fast your SSD is. Uh, this one, four terabytes instruments B, is rated one. That's a good thing. This one, four terabyte SSD, the other one is rated five. That's a bad thing. That's much slower. So you really want a fast SSD because what happens is Once it's worked out how fast it thinks your SSD is it either loads lots of samples uh, If it's slow so that it doesn't have to take so long getting the stuff off the, uh, the drive or if it's a very fast drive It'll lose so the, the, the faster the drive the less memory your computer is going to need That's a good thing because memory as we'll see is going to be at a premium pretty damn quickly okay so look there you have um, your multiple um, uh, instances you can put other things in stack slur let's put one of those in in he goes and you can put up to 16 of them in and you can have them going to multiple outs so from which point of view it works very much like um, uh, um, uh, uh, contact and, and, and stuff like that um, now the whole kind of paradigm here, I know, okay, there's two types of people. No, um, it's about to be an enormous generalization. There's sort of two ways people work with uh, putting stuff together. One is they have one instrument called violin, and it has loads and loads of different articulations, you know, it's all the sort of legatos and pizzicatos and everything else, and it's all and it, um, swapped around using key switches. Or there's the other people who have tons and tons and tons of uh, MIDI channels, and each one is a different articulation. Um, it... Have you noticed how noisy this chair is? I apologize. Um, and in East-West, um, they sort of 
are more designed for the latter approach of lots of channels because although they have some instruments which have big key switches uh, if you look at brass actually brass diamond is a good example you can have uh, you can have key switches which have uh, you know most of the stuff in there so if we go and replace let's just clear out all of these two uh, and we'll put uh, add that one in and I'll show you and then you can see but it does take a long time to load because they are enormous you know okay so what you get wisely what you get with um, composer cloud is not not a sort of snapshot you get the entire history of East West and remember you know they were doing samples way back in the day most of the stuff I originally got came on things like CDs and DVDs it was that long ago and so you get everything in there so if you look down this list down of instruments down the side and and you go into some of these early ones where's an early one uh, adrenaline I think adrenaline was an early one wasn't it uh, but some of them were still say you know CD1 and CD2 and things like that so the, they really haven't been touched very much since the other than being put into play since the days when they first came out so you've got quite a lot of stuff like this which is kind of construction kit sort of things you've got guitars you've got um, you know all kinds of more poppy stuff like pop brass and backup singers and things like this um, the main event for a lot of people are these the Hollywood series orchestral uh, libraries. So you've got strings, brass, um, woodwind and percussion. And that's the order they were produced. So br strings was the earliest, which came out in 2010, I think. That's 10. OK, what were you doing in 2010? I didn't want to know that. I really didn't want to know that. What else were you doing in 2010? Oh, good. OK, but it was a long time ago. OK, um, and this was the first Hollywood strings was the first of what has become to be called the next generation libraries you know they were enormously powerful and uh, some things people haven't done again uh, since uh, for good maybe good reasons and some things they just absolutely nailed um, so some of their libraries are uh, by comparison with the stuff you the brand stuff new stuff you get now uh, the interface is a bit clunky and things like that so Brass was their second one, and brass is, they really kind of nailed the brass one. The brass one's great, and uh, the best, I think, of the lot. Uh, then they did woodwind, which isn't my favourite, and then they did percussion, which is great. So oh, those are the Hollywood um, orchestra uh, ones, and those are the most powerful. And um, I will, in my little free course, go into quite a lot more detail as to how you get the best out of them, because particularly things like Hollywood strings, there's an art to it, trust me, there is an art to it. Okay, so, but look look down the bottom here. You see there's some older stuff which people often overlook, which is really great, okay? So look, East West Symphonic Orchestra. This was one of the earliest ones. It was where they started, and it was recorded, I think, in a big concert hall in the Pacific Northwest, somewhere up near Seattle. And what you get is this very... Uh, so, quite an ambient sound. Let me get some cellos up or something. How about some spiccato cellos? Yes, please, guy. Okay. Let's load our friend's spiccato cello. Hear how, see here. I mean, it's, it, it's quite, quite bitey by today's standards, I think probably. But look, and this one, if you have the diamond edition, you can, you can get rid of that. So you just get the close mic. I quite, frankly, that is not a bad sound, is it? I was going all pirates there, weren't I? Oh, Jim lad, all that kind of nonsense. <laughs> what? What are you talking about, guy? Okay, look. Um, I think people underestimate this library uh, significantly. And one of the huge advantages to you, if you're just starting out, is uh, the old symphonic orchestra actually was quite low impact when it comes to your computer. So if you are using that 1986 Dell, uh, no, you're still not. <laughs> uh, but if you're using limited technology 
um, then I think you should st the advice with the um, uh, with the uh, composer cloud is start with a simple you know the, the the simple light instruments and if you need more trade up don't go straight in saying well, you know what I think I want a nice string sound so I'm going to go to let's have a look uh, Hollywood strings uh, where's Hollywood string because when you get into string here look and it says where's the powerful system one long powerful system uh, some of these are unbelievably heavy coating and I'm not even going to try loading some of these up um, the reason they're so heavy hitting is that it's separated out you, every time you play one note you get you're using 13 separate voices because all the all the various um, volume um, uh, layers are in there with and without vibrato because you can with the long powerful one you have to use you control vibrato with one controller and volume with another so in other words what you need is two hands to play um, the keyboard two more hands one on the volume one on the vibrato and one more hand to take your C so what you need is five hands uh, one brain and a cup of tea and then the long powerful one you can do in real time <sighs> people don't do that do they no guy they don't do that and but so therefore if you are the proud owner of um, one of these do not just leap into long powerful system because uh, you think oh that's gonna be the best um, because some of this stuff 13 voices do you see this KSFP key switch finger position now they were the first and as far as I know the last ever to do this that that you use key switches to change so you can play the same note at different finger positions on the uh, fretboard of your violin it's inc in so detailed but people just want to play sometimes people just want to play and um, it, so it does provide you with enormous power but with that power comes a lot of patience because you just got to sit there and learn to use it and all the rest of it so right I tell you what let's just crack into some of this and get some stuff up okay I'm gonna get uh, let, let's let's live and die by my um, assertion that uh, symphonic orchestra is still uh, still cuts it in today's uh, well uh, what have we got we got Okay, so let's get into the player. If we find that a bit cutty, what happens if we go for stage plus surround? No, it's too mute. Too. You see, just the basic one's pretty good. I may cue some of that. Okay, let's just run. was that guy I have no idea quantize now there's two ways of doing this I you can either keep on loading stuff up inside your single instance but frankly if you're not going to load up hundreds and hundreds of instruments I'm just going to use a different instance for each layer I'm going to put on and so next up is going to be ladies and gentlemen let's hear it for the basses contrabass solo no I don't want one I want nine because I have absolutely no self-control uh, okay what have we got here short script quick up downs six I'm going to go with those uh, yeah replace let's get rid of this Oh, I've already got the Legato cellos loaded up in that one. Oh, never mind. I'm just going to go for it. Right, let's. So we're going to put uh, a little. Ooh. Are you hearing that going a bit left and right? Oh, never mind. I don't mind. I, I don't care. Here we go. Um, there was uh, a bit of a quantization problem at the end there, but that doesn't matter. We don't care. Right, I'm going to have another one. I tell you what, instruments play. 
I'm just going to have eight of them or something. Because I can, it'll now open up and everything will be great. And so once you've downloaded all this, you can, as I say, you can order it on a hard drive at extra cost. Uh, but, eh, you know, if you've got a decent internet connection, it won't kill you. I mean, no, it's, the, the Diamond ones do take an absolute age to download. Um, now, OK, let's go into a different. Let's look for... Have we got Storm Drum in here? I seem to remember Storm Drum being their epic percussion. I haven't played for it for quite a while, but we're going to play with it now if I can find it. Did I download... You see, I've got two and a half terabytes of this stuff and I still haven't downloaded everything. Is that true, guys? Like, yes, it is. Pro Drummer, Public Enemy. Um, I wonder if I've downloaded it. I didn't download Storm Drum. You idiot guy. Complete idiot. Okay, never mind. Um, we'll use something else. I don't mind. Fab 4. You see, there's some absolute classic stuff like Fab 4 knocking about in here, which is a sort of recreation of many of the Beatles sounds, which is absolutely blooming marvellous. Okay, drums. What have we got? Uh, Louvi uh, marching drums, Taos drum with mallet. Oh, I'm just going to see what a Taos drum is. It's one of them. <laughs> it's a bit. Gretsch bass drum, Ludwig bass drum, 36 inch. Replace. I'm going to have one of them. Okay, I'll go with you, mate. Right, stand by, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, that'll do to be going on with. Now, uh, let's go for something completely different. Let's go for, uh, where's Ministry of Rock? Ministry of Rock 2 has got some nice stuff in it. Guitars, heavy guitars, Schecter 7 string, lead, uh, key switches and mods, lead. Uh, let's see what this, oh, there's a bar. I should have gone for the baritone. Oh, let's see, hang on. Oh, this is very loud. Yes, I know. Can't you turn it down, guy? Yes, you can. There, I'll turn it down. Now, what we're going to do with that uh, is we're going to take that, play three, and we're going to put uh, a trance gate on it. Uh, any programmable gate will do. Um, oh, hang on. I'm looking in the wrong place, aren't I? Yes, guy, because you're an idiot. That's better. So a little plug-in. Uh, this one's from Killer, uh, from Killer Hearts. I absolutely love it. I use it day in, day out. You must be bored to tears with watching me do this. See? Now you see why I like it. Okay. Uh, this is sounding a bit old fashioned, but it doesn't matter. No, no, it's a bit, it's a bit trailer trash, isn't it? It doesn't matter. Okay, now let's get some, uh, okay, two things. For, okay, firstly, I'm gonna go, I will put in a horn line using orchestral brass, not pop brass, uh, brass diamond. There we go, and we're gonna go for, okay, you can have two, you can have six, Six French horns, why not? Are we going for the legato slur accent? Yes, we are. Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, watch this little button down here as it loads this immense patch. Look, look how long it takes. Well, it does take quite a long time because there is a ton of stuff to load. So I can tell you stories about, oh, no, I won't. I don't know what I'm gonna say. No, so 
but it is do you see that when you get going with this it's quite intuitive but you do need quite a lot of horsepower how much are we using here at the moment uh, performance so we're currently using 15 gigabytes of memory just with these small number of instruments up and 9% of my immense CPU but that wouldn't necessarily be 9% of yours because I have no less than 14 cores in this PC what well that's because I am the man who has no sense of uh, proportion there we go. I, you know, if you can get one core get 14 that's what I think anyway where were we right okay we were about okay so before we do anything with this I'd like a little bit of reverberation please uh, so we go to the send and uh, we've already in there we go spaces we're going to turn it on Okay, right, that'll do, thank you very much. Go away again. That is a nice uh, legato sound. was a half a good idea and then the second half went all astray didn't it did you notice that did you notice yeah this I hear with students a lot actually first half of the tune great second half of the tune not so much but they stick with it because they like the first half don't be satisfied with uh, a wonky second half be be whatever No, that's a bit. Okay, let me see if, now what I traditionally do is I work this out and then I forget how to do it and I play something completely different when I come to play. Okay, yep, I'll go with that and we'll dupe it across and this next line down, we're going to put trumpet in and we're going to double the uh, top line with a trumpet second time through because that's uh, what people do <laughs> if they want it to sound like every other piece of uh, film music you've ever heard. Um, two trumpets or three trumpets, I'm going to go two and I'm not always a fan of always knee-jerk, knee-jerk using um, uh, legato, for, particularly for trumpets and things. Because um, a lot of the time, if you actually listen to how a brass player plays, they're not playing every note legato. But this line is legato, so therefore we are going to go down the legato route. You also must notice that legato uh, samples choose an insane amount of memory because of for various reasons and particularly samples which were produced back in the day um, used up oh my lord how much okay and the way you can see if you go down here from this little menu at the top here go down to sample purge okay this uh, three trumpets is using 1.78 gigabytes okay now what's this purge thing if you okay click reset you play it through Hang on, we haven't played it through yet. You, the idea is you, you, if you play it through, it then marks which samples it actually uses. And then it, if you click purge, it'll get rid of all the samples you didn't use. So it'll massively reduce the amount of uh, memory using. Um, but uh, we haven't played it through yet. So what I'm going to do is do that. Um, and I'm then going to uh, transpose it up by an octave so that it may need more than one octave but we'll give it a go see how it sounds okay that could be worse I've heard worse than that um, except it doesn't start at the right place ah, I know why 
Um, so we need to take the front off that. Uh, actually, oh, this is going to be really boring. Um, talk amongst yourselves for a second. I just need to quantize the very first note, or I can't chop it off properly without it doing dodgy stuff. Dodgy stuff. Yes, dodgy stuff. Right, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Put it back where it should be. And um, how long have we been going? Oh, we've been going just up to coming up to the half hour. So look, I'm going to add one more layer. Um, what shall I add? What do you want? I'm taking requests. <laughs> no, I'm not, because this isn't live. It's recorded, so I can't hear you. Right. Um, What should we put in there? Uh, yeah, it's been a bit of uh, drum and bass. Why I say that? I mean, is that the worst idea I've ever had? Yes, Kai. It is so obviously the worst idea you've ever had. Mm, I think it's very unlikely to work. Words. Oh, except this doesn't. Okay, the other thing, of course, is this doesn't, uh, it, isn't sync, it, it won't sync to the tempo, so it's going to be way out of time and I'll have to... T t uh, but look, I, okay, look, oh, for goodness sake, God, why can't you just stick to one idea? Okay, what we're going to do, let, let's do this very quickly. Uh, I am going to use it. First thing I'm going to do is uh, record a bit of it in. Okay, then I'm going to bounce it to um, audio, then I'm going to uh, go into the editor and set the, the actual thing is originally at 164 BPM, so we put 164 in there, like that, and then we click this button and it will now adjust the tempo so that it fits. Uh, uh, it doesn't mean necessarily the front of it's going to fit, so we'll just have to do some manual trimming to get it uh, sorted, turn off the snapping uh, and just get to that front and it might sound terrible. I'm sort of expecting it to sound not great, but, but something inside me says give it a go. It's no longer very drum and bassy because it's slowed down a lot. Um, the other thing you can do, maybe... Okay, look, it's, it, it's alright. It's, it's not the worst thing that could happen. And I could make that a lot short. I could speed it up. Like that. That works. Okay, look. Um, this has been a very quick introduction to the wonderful world of uh, Composer Cloud. Uh, I do cast off the sunglasses of that because, you know, for those of you who are lucky enough still to be students, um, you know, $10 a month, it, if you haven't got you know, lots of stuff already. This is a complete no-brainer, isn't it, really? I mean, do you know what? There's a spider's web over the end of the lens. How strange. But really, uh, you know, $200 a year is what they're currently doing it for, and that's what you get. Um, so uh, you get, some of the sounds are absolutely uh, top of the shop. Some of them are a bit, uh, you know, uh, so what? But you're getting so many of them, there's always going to be something in there. And you don't have to write orchestral music. You know, there's uh, lots of other stuff in there as well. So look, I hope you found this useful. Um, and we'll be back with more of this stuff very soon and if you want the longer in-depth edition of this little video um, which goes through more of these libraries and a little bit more detail and everything else then um, click the link down below and we'll send you links to it and you can get stuck in. Anyway, hope you'll join me again very soon. Uh, that's it for today. See you soon. Bye-bye.